Hello, Facebook fam. I have a few minutes to go live before I take my group call in the repatterning project, so I thought I'd come and say hi. Um, I felt inspired to talk a little bit today about something that happened uh, yesterday and today um, on uh, the Book of Face. Hi, Chanel. Hi, guys. Come on in. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about, maybe you guys saw the post of Aura North's that I shared. Um, I want to say it was yesterday or late last night that I shared it, uh, where she talks about, um, you know, um, something that a lot of coaches have been doing lately, which is to uh, post something very controversial. Um, and then the, when they're called out for their uh, problematic language, rather than um, to apologize for it or to sit with it and hear the people who are uh, critiquing them, uh, their response instead is to uh, uh, to say, well, what did this trigger in you? What is this bringing up for you? Um, you know, what is, and um, you know, there's a lot of people who have been doing it and it, it just sort of came to an unfortunate head in this particular incident. And, um, you know, so I, I spoke to this person on their, uh, on their post. I explained uh, why what they were doing um, was uh, was using non-inclusive language, which was a problem, which was a microaggression toward um, people of a certain age, uh, toward uh, people who are trans, and um, suggested an alternate way of phrasing it. And I also understand that, like, I give people stuff pretty straight. Like, I'm not really, um, um, if I'm doing, you know, I, I consider it, like, if I'm doing someone a favor of pointing out what they could change in their language, you know, um, it's really not my intention to be rude about it, but I'm also not going to sugarcoat it either. I'm just gonna say, so this is what this is, and this is why you're getting this reaction, and here's a better way to do it. Um, I think one of the things about um, about my um, my way of dealing with people is I just, you know, I would, I would rather get the information um, than, um, than be coddled and I don't want to have to coddle people either and I'm also working on you know I'm certainly working on like one of the things that came up for me around the eclipse is really removing um, the emotional charge from things like there's you know I, my Mars is in Libra so I really want everything to be fair and just and when things are not fair and just um, I can get angry about that sometimes I can get angry if I feel like there's a whole bunch of people out there um, doing the work for um, for trans rights doing the right the, the work for equality um, and then there are people who just, you know, who, who have not done the same amount of work that I have in, um, uh, you know, in listening to those voices and who then, you know, end up, you know, going on and, and posting things that, that are a problem. Um, so I don't, you know, uh, so, so I admittedly, you know, I'm looking to remove some of that. Um, I'm looking to remove the charge from that interaction because ultimately, like, of course I want to be heard, you know, but in this instance, you know, I actually felt like even though I was being pretty straight, you know, with this person, um, I didn't say fuck you or anything like that. You know, I didn't, you know, I didn't accuse them of being awful or whatever. I was just like, this thing that you're doing is a problem. You are, you are being, you are being transphobic. I don't think that you are transphobic, but you are being in this moment, you are being transphobic. So, um, so anyway, um, and then, uh, Aura North, who's a, a Facebook friend of mine, uh, she's the author of uh, I Don't Want to Be an Empath Anymore, which is a terrific book that uh, it's currently on hold because it's being re-released by a publisher, but when it comes out again, you should absolutely look into that. It's, it's really terrific, and she's absolutely worth a follow in the meantime, too. Uh, she made a post about this behavior of, you know, of coaches saying, like, hey, uh, when people call you out in the comments, like, don't say you're, you're triggered. Like, don't say, like, oh, what is this triggering for you? Or, oh, this is, you know, you're not, you don't get to play that trickster archetype and pretend that you were just sparking, like you, that you said something that's totally problematic because you were trying to spark this interesting discussion. No, that's not how, and also that's just not how trickster energy works. Trust me, I work with Loki. He sought me out. I'll tell you that story one time. <laughs> that's a completely different story. Um, but you know, trickster energy is very clever. They have their plan all along. You don't just get to post something problematic and then say like, oh, I meant to, to trigger all this interesting discussion. Meanwhile, half the people in your comments are really mad at you because they feel excluded or they feel offended or they feel like you're not listening to them. And instead of actually listening their, to their concerns and adjusting your language, what you're doing instead is you're, um, you're saying, well, why did this trigger something for you? So what you're doing is you're implying there's no problem with what I said. The problem is all in you. And if you had really healed on the inside, then you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't feel this way about my post. You wouldn't be triggered about this if you had actually healed all your trauma. Uh, which is a really gaslighty behavior. 
And I don't believe that this person in particular was doing this on purpose. I actually think that my, my guess is she was mimicking some of the male coaches that she's seen do this. Um, and when she got called out for it, um, you know, I think what's ironic is that many male coaches who get called out for this kind of stuff, um, they just don't care. They just don't register. You know, they, a lot of them just say like, I'm, I'm just getting rid of this person in my sphere and I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. And I've seen them like dig their heels in time after time when someone says this is the problem and they'll just block and they'll just keep going. Um, which I think is part of that sort of, uh, egoic male social conditioning of, not needing to tend to everyone's needs the way that the same way that women do. So um, when this person who was a woman got called out, her response was, um, you know, to be really reactive about it. And she, uh, you know, she came on to the post of auras that I shared where neither of us named her. We were just naming the problem because again, it actually really wasn't personal to her, except that in this circumstance, she was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. It was something that we've been seeing a lot in recent weeks. And we said that this is a problem. This is an epidemic throughout the spiritual community. This is not just about, uh, this is not just about one person, you know, but she went ahead and, um, and she saw the post and she, uh, you know, she said, well, I hope like, I hope you guys never make a mistake or whatever. I hope you never do this or whatever. Um, you know, and, um, she also said classy ladies, which is like two words that I, if I never hear the word classy again, if I never hear the word ladies again, it won't be too soon. <laughs> so, um, Clearly this person and I did not share uh, an ener energetic signature to begin with. Um, so it's probably all for the best. But, um, but you know, it's, it's like, if you make a mistake and you get called out for it, first of all, if I didn't even mention your name in the post, I'm just saying that this is a problem in general. First of all, why would you out yourself on the post as being the person who was the problem? Because if it were me, I'd be like, wow, I'm glad that person didn't write my name on that post. Now I get to sit with this and I get to learn and be better. Thank God everyone else doesn't know that I did this horribly embarrassing thing. <laughs> like, thank God that, you know, I'd be like, wow, that person was generous by not naming me. Now I kind of get to be quiet for a little while. I get to sit with that thing that I'm, that I'm apparently doing and I get to come back and be better. And uh, sometimes I can even be like, mm, that didn't happen, <laughs> you know? Um, not that that didn't happen. I register obviously, but I'm very grateful for the times in which I get the opportunity to um, uh, to examine myself without you know without being without experiencing something that is uh, you know that is public or that is uh, you know humiliating or, or someone you know calling me out for stuff. And I have been called out for stuff on Facebook before. You know, you guys might not have seen it because I think you know the two big instances I can think of were on other people's posts. But in both instances, I took what was said. You know, so here's what to do if you do get called out, right? So what you don't want to do if you get called out, if you get called on problematic language, what you don't want to do is you don't want to just accuse that person of being triggered. Um, cause as Aura said in her post that I shared, um, trigger happen, tra trigger healing, legit trauma healing, legit trauma healing does not happen in the comment section. And anyone who is worth their salt as a coach knows this. This is not something you're not, you don't have the container to work through people's triggers with them. And chances are they're not actually triggered. They just don't like what you're saying. And if you sit and listen to why that's the case and you actually, you know, rather than putting it back on them and saying, well, this is your issue. What is this triggering in you? You know, this is the individual thing. No, literally everyone is on your post is saying the same thing. You're just, you're just wrong. You just made a statement that happens to, to exclude a lot of people. And there's a better way for you to use your language, you know, and, and that's it. It's, it's nothing more personal than that, you know? So you don't want to accuse people of being triggered, first of all. Um, because chances are they're not, <laughs> you know? You don't wanna accuse someone of projecting because um, it's very easy to jump to, especially in the spiritual community, well, you're projecting on me. Um, and you don't wanna jump to that as, as a first thing. If you sit, if you go and sit and you know, about three different people tell you, no, that's not true about you, what that person said, then maybe that person is projecting. But the first thing you wanna do is sit there and ask myself, is this true? You know, let me find out, let me go and I'll get to that in a second, what you do wanna do. But what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna be, um, you don't wanna dig your heels in, you don't wanna not listen, you don't want to accuse someone of being triggered or put it all back on their trauma or their triggers because um, because this kind of behavior is now something that is also being called out. And, um, and you don't want to, I don't know why you would, if you do get called out, if you would pick a fight with someone in the comments, um, the person who's calling out the problem, even without naming you by name, you know, like why would you, 
Like you're just embarrassing yourself. Like if someone's like, there's a problem going on, I wouldn't be like, I have that problem and I'm gonna be angry about it and pick a fight with you now to just to prove your point. Like why would you, why would I do that, you know? Um, so anyway, there have been times that I've been called out in, uh, in the comment sections and, um, and in, in all of those, you know, in all of those situations, here's what I did. I didn't do everything perfectly because inevitably what I did was I wrote two or three more comments trying to explain what I meant, which, uh, which is defensive, which is actually, someone was actually telling me that my language is a problem and I was trying to explain why my intention was for it not to be problematic. But again, that disregards the impact that my language had. So, um, so I stopped when they kept telling me after two or three comments and they were like, this is no, you're still being a problem. I was like, all right, well, you know, usually it's a person, either like a person of color or a trans person or someone who belongs to the marginalized group that my language is unconsciously harming. Again, they're not saying I'm doing it on purpose, you know? And so what I'll do is I'll say, okay, thanks for letting me know. I'm going to go take this to a third party that I trust. And normally I go and ask at least two friends more if I can, and I'll show them the interaction and I'll say, where did I go wrong here? I do this for two reasons. I do this first of all, because the friend who's explaining to me is going to, who I trust to be, you know, you know, I'm not just gonna pick someone who's gonna tell me what I'm gonna, what I wanna hear. I wanna pick someone who I know is, uh, is good with social justice issues. So I, I choose someone who's gonna be kind, who loves me, but who also really wants me to be my best. And I say, here's this interaction, like where did I go wrong? And I usually try to pick a person who, um, understands that issue but is not in that same demographic of marginalized person because as I tell the person who originally made the comments to me I say look you know you shouldn't ha you, the burden of educating me shouldn't be on you so I'm gonna go take this to um, to someone I trust and I'm gonna ask multiple opinions and I'm gonna see if I can learn you know if, if I can really see things from your side and um, I you know you notice that I don't like I don't apologize right away um, I will apologize for um, for unintentionally causing a reaction that I didn't mean, um, but I don't immediately take any random person's comment as truth. You know, I don't have to immediately stop what I'm doing, um, or immediately rescind. I have to immediately stop what I'm doing, but I don't have to immediately rescind what I'm doing because I want to make sure that there's actually truth in this. You know, because again if I if I was living in a world where literally any person just got to say that I was doing harm and I immediately stopped then I'm giving all of my power away so instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that situation and I'm gonna go to someone I trust and I'm gonna say what did I do here um, was I in the wrong is this person just just being mean or random or weird or triggered or whatever and I'll work with those two or three people that I trust to hold me accountable to say like well here's where you could have been more sensitive Arden or here's where you know and sometimes I'm like oh man you know maybe I took it for granted that I could um, could say this thing and that people would know what I mean but if I really were was a trans person and I encountered every day people saying this thing in ways that are problematic and are mean and ill-intentioned you know it, it's a function of my privilege that I assume that everything is okay that I know because I'm saying it that it's cool and then when a person who's actually like no I face this kind of language every day and even if you didn't mean it it's still hurtful um, it's really like it's shitty and privileged for me to be like no I didn't mean that like we're cool we're cool bro like no it's not me no it, absolutely not so I did myself a learn and I was like oh you know what it's the function of my privilege that I assume that everyone knows that this is a safe container um, and actually I have to do better at being more considerate that many people who are marginalized uh, may not know that uh, that I that something is a safe container because they don't know me they don't know who I am they don't know if I'm saying this that you know it's whatever I was actually like I, I felt like I was like super defensive in this one situation because I actually came onto the thread to like defend women and I accidentally you know ended up saying something that came off as transphobic and um, you know and I was like I came on to defend all women, trans women included, against this dude who's being a misogynist in the comments, and now I'm getting attacked, you know? And um, so I had to like sit with that and I had to be like, this is not about me. And the person was like, well, yeah, that dude is a lost cause. I think that you might actually listen. I was like, well, you could be a little nicer about it if that's what you want, you know? But again, like that, but then I'm like, well, that's kind of tone policing. So what I did, 
again, I took it to a different person who was not going to have that same emotional charge around it, showed them the situation and said, where did I go wrong? And I did myself a learn and then I came back onto the thread and I made an apology and I said, you know what? I sat with this and I understood where it come, where it came from. I think I understand where you're coming from now. And I'm just really sorry for any harm that I caused and thank you for, um, Thanks everyone for your patience. And some people on the thread, like they were still mad at me. Like I got a couple angry reacts to my apology because at that point people were like, this is bullshit, you're, you suck or what? Okay, like fine, then you're allowed to be angry, whatever. But at the very least, you know, I know that I'm evolving forward and like, you know, I'm gonna make mistakes. The real thing here is what do you do when you make that mistake? So one, stop, um, two, listen, um, three, get an outside opinion on what it is that you're doing. Four, if literally every comment on your post is saying the same thing, don't ask people what is tr what trauma it's triggering for them because everyone's say, like clearly you're the common denominator here. Um, and finally, like when someone gives you that correction and you learn from something, um, say thank you and apologize. You don't have to grovel or anything, but just say, hey, I didn't intend to cause harm here. Um, I'm hearing from everyone that, uh, that the impact was different from my intention, um, so I'm sorry for that. And thank you for your patience with me. Thank you for your patience, and I'm sorry for any harm I caused. And here's what I learned, and here's how I'm going to be different, you guys. Like, it's so not fucking difficult to do that. It's so, like, I mean, I understand it's difficult, but once you, once you flip that switch in your mind that says, I actually want to be responsible. I actually want to be better. I actually want to use the, these opportunities where I get called out to try and refine myself into a better person. Like, why would you not choose that rather than, you know, rather than just going and um, saying, wow, classy ladies. And I was like, well, <laughs> okay. You know, the Buddha says that, you know, if, uh, someone gives you a gift and you don't accept it, that gift still belongs to the giver. So those, all those words still belong to that person. I do not, I do not accept those. That's, that is not my circus. That is not my monkeys. So, um, so here, you know, and then of course she blocked me. So here like was an opportunity where, you know, someone had a choice to either sit with something, see where they could, you know, end up being better for it. And, uh, or, or, you know, block someone and pick a fight and have like an enemy in the community, you know, and, and it's like we are all the sum of our choices and that is what we do, you know, and I understand that, you know, I understand from other people that I can be very confronting sometimes and I'm also working, I'm working on that myself, I'm working on being able to be kinder about things, it's just that I'm really angry that I put in all this work and not everybody else has, like I said, my Mars is in Libra, so my Mars energy vibrates at that, I want things to be fair and I want things to be just. And uh, there's so much discussion, there's so much discussion already happening about social justice issues that if it's 2018, if you're not caught up, like I've lost some respect for you. And that just like, that just is what it is. But I am trying to balance that with, with, um, with trying to really genuinely help people be better uh, rather than just, uh, you know, rather than uh, making them feel like they're totally trashed for it. But you know, even if someone does trash you a little bit, like you still have that opportunity um, to sit with it and at least learn to be better going forward. So, you know, and, and finally the thing you can do like as a preventative measure is like give people spaces and opportunities to call you out. You know, I've noticed myself doing this in my course now and you know, I'm holding space for the repatterning project and it is a really intense container. And I've said in multiple occasions, I've been like, tell me if this is helpful, you guys, tell me if this is helpful. Or sometimes I'll be like, Hey, I have a metaphor. Um, this metaphor happens like this metaphor, you know, is a little fat shaming or this metaphor talks about um, broken windows theory, which is kind of racist. And, and even though it's even though the metaphor I'm using it in is not a racist one, maybe I could find a better one. Maybe you guys could help me for that. Like, you know, so um, and and someone agreed to someone was like, hey, yeah, let me chat with you later. I think I have a better metaphor for that for that thing you're talking about. Or sometimes, you know, I'm very careful also because we're dealing with people's past and people's you know, people's trauma and stuff that is coming up for them. If I, you know, analyze them in a group setting, I also, I always ask, I say, by the way, let me know if this feels true for you. This possibly is something that could have happened. Let me know if that feels right, you know, because I'm not imposing my narrative on, on, on another person. And I'm leaving that space for people to tell me with kindness and compassion if I'm doing something wrong. And if I leave that space and I'm like, hey, you guys, if ever I say something that doesn't sit well with you, if ever I say something that like feels unhelpful, you know, unless you're one of those like alt-right trolls that somewhere somehow finds their way onto my profile, then I'm probably just going to block you because the thing is that you find right or not, you know, <laughs> not the same things that I find right. Uh, but if, you know, 
But if you have a legitimate concern, like I leave that open and like, and I, and I invite people, I'm like, Hey, be nice. You know, I'm learning. And, um, you know, if you say that oftentimes, like if you say like, Hey, can you explain this to me? I'm so sorry. I'm still learning. Um, people will often slow down. Like I've even like, I've had people say that to me and I'm like, all right, I will slow down and I will unpack this for you at kindergarten level. Even though in my heart, like I'm really angry that you don't already know that trans women are not born with vaginas. So they don't self lubricate in the same way that yours does. Like, you know, do you even know what a trans woman is? But I will stop and I will be like, okay, here's a link. Like here's a Google, like here you go. Um, at the very least, you know, so if you even just show that you're listening, people will already be kinder. But if you turn it back and say, well, what's triggering for you? What is this? What is it about you that this is that, that this is bringing up something for you? Then of course they're going to get defensive because you're saying it's not my problem. This is your problem. And that might, that just, it just, you know, it just isn't always the case. It's just really, <laughs> it's just really, really not always the case, especially in 2018. So leave that window open for people to be able to tell you kindly and compassionately where you're doing something that you might think is helpful but is not helpful. Um, and you will experience that kindness and compassion. You know, you will you will experience that. People won't have to feel threatened or, you know, people won't have to feel like you're doing this on purpose or, or whatever. You know, we're all out here trying to be better. Um, and it's important, you know, it's just really important if, if you know, talk to your base, talk to your, talk to your people. I think one of the things that makes me a pretty good coach is that I still identify in many ways more as a survivor than I do a coach, you know? And of course, like it's my job as a coach to have my boundaries. It's my job to hold the container. That is my responsibility. I'm not just down here in like, like being buddy, buddy with y'all being, you know, like, um, oh, it's fine. I don't need boundaries. Cause I'm one of you too. Cause that's also problematic. But I know that I still have that mindset of, I know what it's like to be a survivor and I know what it's like to, um, to get over those hurdles. And I know what it's like to see someone else use triggering language. And I know what it's like to be gaslit and, uh, to experience all that. So I'm, I'm really like, I'm really on, you know, I, I'm really on that side. I'm really on that side of the battle. I don't, you know, of course I want to be, um, of course I want to be a great coach. Of course I want to have a successful, successful business, but never at the expense of losing my empathy for what it's like to be in that pit, for what it's like to be in that, in those trenches, you know? So, um, so that's, that's something that's important to me. So if you do make a mistake, you know, it's important to know, um, it's important, you know, how you deal with it is really everything. And that's really a reflection on you. It's not even a reflection on the people who called you out. So, um, so it's really, you know, even in making this video, it's like this person already blocked me, but you know, I'm doing this for people who get called out, um, uh, because I do have compassion about it, about, about it. You know, I don't want to see you, I don't want to see people go all Danielle Laporte and, you know, like ruin their careers by <laughs> saying something that is, uh, that is super racist that they don't realize it is. And then like digging their heels in, you know? So now when I get called out, I'm like, let me not do that. Let me sit with this. Let me like at least press pause, you know, before I take everything back, I'm at least just going to press pause and I'm going to go to people and I'm going to be like, it's, is this real? Am I doing this? Is this like, is this something I should change? Then I'm going to come back to it and I'm going to unpause and I'm going to say, Hey, I took a time out and here's what I learned and here's my commitment to doing better. So it's just not that fucking difficult people. It's just really not, it's not that hard. Like I understand it's hard. It feels hard in the moment to sit with your triggers. I get it, you know, because you feel attacked and then, Oh my God. But like, I don't know if she hadn't blocked me, I would have like, I would have like <laughs> written back on, like, she was like classy ladies. And I was like, Oh, what, what is this triggered for you? You know, what is, what, tra what trauma is this bringing up on you right now that you feel triggered by my post? You know, I mean, that's the irony of it really is that, you know, people can dish it out, but they can't take it. So Anyway, don't be like that. <laughs> um, heal your shit, <laughs> fix your issues. Um, and it's not that anyone is never allowed to make a mistake, but it really like your character is shown by how you handle your mistakes. So handle your mistakes. And now I have no idea what time it is and I have to go in and take my group call for the repatterning project. Um, we're having an amazing time. Registration is of course closed because we're all already well underway, but we will certainly, uh, we will certainly be out to tell you all how it went and I'll, I'll definitely do, be doing it again in the future. So do stay tuned because we're doing a lot of amazing work and I can't wait for you guys to hear um, at the end of it um, how it all went. All right, everyone have a great evening and um, stay classy, ladies. <laughs>